hello everybody let me get the camera focused properly and we are good okay so as i had put the poll on the community tab on what you wanted to see this sunday if you still wanted hearts or if you wanted something else and the something else had a higher percentage so we are going to do some um review and some bonus stuff and the review that i want to do for you is best flexible molds and you know that i work a lot with best flexible molds and I absolutely love them. Uh, there is only one con. And uh, let me say hi first, because I I was in a rush to try to get everything that I needed around me. My, house, my table is, as usual, very full. Turn this off. Okay, so hi, Cherry, Carolyn, Debbie, Colleen, Dawn, Linda. Laos Dandel, okay, I keep forgetting <laughs> what's your name, Kim and Gaylin, um, Sabine. Okay, now the thing with the best flexible molds, the only con that you can find on it is uh, when it comes to, and I just worked on th with this a few minutes ago, a few, half, an hour ago, and I didn't clean it properly. Uh, they are not very shiny. There are molds that are super shiny and molds that are not very, very shiny. And best flexible molds are not the shiny kind. kind. They are not the super shiny kind, so you'll still have to do a little bit of sanding and buffing. Uh, the good part about it, though, is that they do not have, there are some uh, molds that do have all kinds of tiny, tiny, tiny cracks uh, that you cannot notice on the mold itself, but you see, uh, I'm, <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, hi, Cecile. Hi, Witch Willow. Hi, Broken Dragon. Hi, Linda. Um, the thing is, uh, to give you a little bit of a history, short-term history, um, some of you know that these molds were initially uh, made by an artist named Penny Joe, but as of last year, uh, Trish Hodgins from uh, Polyclay Play had purchased uh, Best Flexible Molds, and she's the one who's making them now. When it comes to the um, uh, thing with the cracks, uh, it is very, very simple. Uh, some of the mold makers uh, do not have at all or do not have good quality vacuum chambers. Because what happens, yes, uh, yeah, you can do your own molds. You can buy all that, you know, silicone, liquid rubber and stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you still face the danger of uh, air bubbles in it. That's why the best molds, after they are done, they have to be put in a vacuum chamber so that any possible air bubbles will come out um before the material starts hardening the only other thing for and that is for a polymer clay artist that you might find um a little unpleasant is the fact that some of these molds are very very deep but uh, these molds that are super deep are essentially mostly for resin or for making um, directly the whole uh, cabochon with the back on it. And I will show you here in a minute how to do this. But uh, you can find not just 
and I need to clean them. They get you know, the best thing to clean uh, is I worked this morning, as I said, is to first wipe them down uh, with um, alcohol, but then wash them with dish uh, soap and wa warm water and then just let them dry and they'll be just fine. Oh, yeah, the best flexible molds you might want to try because a Trish has not just the large ones that are some that are about this big and uh, they are $6.75. These ones are $11. And I'll give you a few things Um a few tips on where to get other ones and uh, how to shop for them because it's very important and i'll show you why um but as i said i'm going to to show you how to work on with the very very deep ones these ones are let me grab my ruler so they are four by three and a quarter yeah, they are four by three and a quarter and the other ones are like three by two, I think, but they are really good. Uh, the thing is that Black's Best Flexible Molds doesn't have only cabochons. Uh, there are quite a bit of cabochon molds, but uh, as you can see, for example, the Hearts one, they are kind of thought out for you to use in sets. There's a lot of them that I don't have, obviously. But, uh, for example, this is the hearts, right? And um, on the hearts, you also get rows, the various sizes of hearts. But you also get a rose, uh, another rose tulip, and another rose. And then... Uh, this one is a scroll, but let me grab uh, this little rose here. And see, they are very, very good uh, quality and very nicely made. I didn't even try this one. I'm Oh, it's a heart with the... I think it's with love. Let me check real quick, because this, this one I didn't try it much. I got it a couple weeks ago, but I didn't try it much. Let's see. Oh, it's I Heart You. It's really cute. cute. Um, but there are two face and hands ones. One... Uh, with larger and one with smaller faces and you also have hands and the faces go really really small and some of them are actually baby faces uh, there's one that's called divas and it has uh, goddess shaped um, you know the ancient goddess shaped shapes and i've shown you how to use and how to re re-sculpt a little bit uh, these ones in order to get more personalized like if you remember when we did the blue fairy pendant and uh, not only that there are some that have uh, larger and some that have really really tiny embellishments <coughs> excuse me and um, if you remember I did the um, trumpet vines and uh, dragonflies um necklace i think it was sometime in end of fall beginning of end of summer beginning of fall like for example uh, this one i think it's called wild flights and it's got hummingbirds it's got dragonflies acorns uh, oak leaves uh other leaves little other kind of little uh, flowers and uh, a little branch and if you remember, I used uh, one of the hummingbirds to make the dove on uh, on the heart. 
and there are all kinds of stuff for example there's one that's got uh, turtles sea turtles and it's got not only the shell but also the the legs and then you can also get i used this one if you remember on the four cinnabar um box this one is borders and tassels and it is really, really neat. I use the, these tassels on the four cinnabar box. See, they are real, real tassels and it looked very, very nice. So uh, these are really neat, especially if you're doing a house or a box or a, they are good even for bezels. I see you have a really really nice kind of braided rope for a bezel that would work beautiful and uh, this one as well and a very very thin chain of course you'll have to be very careful when you work with this one but they are absolutely fabulous to use as bezels and that would be and there, there are so many so many ways like see the the thunderbird uh, she's got cherubs she's got all kinds all kinds of stuff but the other thing that is very very important each of them comes with general you know um how to care for it and all that no uh, they are not on amazon anymore trish doesn't like to to sell on amazon because of all the fees so i don't know what to tell you about that but they are only at poly clay play if it would be nice if somebody some store from europe would want to start representing them it would be wonderful so uh you get all the description for example this one is for this that's called cabs and more and you can see all of them here and they are good to make remember that we did and that's what i'm going to show you some more in this live on how to make beads using uh cabochon molds but the other thing so not only you get so this is in uh, english in french and in spanish but not only you get um uh this but each of them comes with a tutorial like for example this one comes with four abalone tutorial and um, what i thought of doing was i already made the cabochons that are in this tutorial directly and then i thought of tweaking it by my own thing hi saskia hi carolina uh and make another um for abalone and have some fun but before i do that let me show you what not to look for when you get a mold okay let me grab a few more because i cannot bring everything here <sighs> okay now that's why i got all these pink ones so i can show you the difference if you see in the description of the mode in any way shape or form written 
for sugar craft for fondant no i don't i have allergies if it says for sugar craft for fondant for stuff like that uh, you will have some issues with that mold and why is that because uh fondant sugar craft is way um and i see this is a shiny mold uh is way softer than polymer clay and if you'll get okay uh, stuff using primo because primo is fairly soft or souffle uh, if you move to and even with cernit um, but if you move to more firmer clays uh, then you'll have a little bit of an issue and why is that because the molds are very very soft and that means that they will get squished in the process of squishing the clay in there right and if they get squished that means that you won't get a good c because look what happens let's see let's think that my fingers are the roller okay so what happens is that the back of your cabochon will have will be wavy uh because there's a big 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 difference even if taken out it's much easier from a sugar a sugar craft than from a regular i mean you can see the the difference see how it is flexible but it's not to this point see these are super 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 soft well these ones yeah they are flexible but you cannot really it, it, it's kind of hard to describe so that's why i said your best bet is if you see that it says sugar craft eh, only if you cannot find it anywhere else like that there are quite a bit of good um polymer clay mold makers on etsy thank you marielle uh but you can have pretty bad experience on etsy too because i know that i got let me see if i can still find it i got a cabochon mold on etsy and the guy had them listed as separately as a sugar craft and there's polymer clay okay so some for sugar crab that are the same and you had to pick from the drop down but this is what i got okay when i saw it i was like oh well good polymer clay nope and not only that but the ones for polymer clay they are more resistant when you cut it and i'll show you here in a minute how to to do the whole thing and when you cut uh, the back out while well, these ones you're gonna cut into them so hi anna hi june uh because let's grab one again a piece of and i'm going to use this and this and why i was wanted to buy another one is because i've got i had this for like gosh 15 years i think and kind of started to get a little bit chipped on the edges I and mean, after using it over and over and over and over again of course uh uh are you using um veneer or are you using translucent to cover no no you cannot bake clay in them the scalpy ones are good you can bake clay in them but uh, these ones no you cannot bake clay in them I generally avoid baking the clay in the mold, uh, to be honest with you. So you want to get a cosmetic sponge 
or you can use also wax paper and why do you use this because if you use directly the roller the clay might stick to the roller and when you come like this it's going to come off hi catherine so and i'll show you both with the cosmetic sponge and with the wax paper and then you grab your rigid blade and you pivot okay hold on to it on one on one end and pivot it it's easier to do with the larger mold like best flexible molds but you can still do this and then gently press in And there we go. We have a very nice, already shiny cabochon. But if I try to do the same thing with the sugar craft one, yeah, you have air bubbles in the translucent. And you probably have uh, captured some air bubbles also between the translucent and the rest uh, i have a a tutorial on how to uh, minimize or maximize plaque in a translucent let me try and find it i'll give you the link There's a specific way you need to condition the clay before. I mean, it's made for Pardo, but it's valid for all the other clays as well. Okay, now let's do it with this one. And you'll see how much more difficult it is to get a proper thing with it. Because number one, see what happens when I push? The mold itself, the cabochon mold itself starts getting uh, displaced. And I'm going to use this time the wax paper because it's transparent and you can see what's going on underneath. See how the mold itself gets, changes shape. So you're not going to have that perfect of a mold. And then when you try to get the thing out see how it's already it's got a dip here because the bottom didn't hold against the pressure of the yeah it's air inside carolina it's air inside that's the only thing that can cause spots but see the difference there are slight see how here in the top it's not perfectly symmetrical and then the back so uh, as i said avoid buying anything that says sugar craft unless you cannot find any special polymer clay molds with that specific thing for example i i have this i wasn't able to find a regular hearts mold in a hurry so so yeah the only thing that i can think of carolina is uh, that you do have uh, air in it so careful when you prepare because you can trap a lot of air in a cane but uh with the regular clay you don't see it you see it only with the translucent because it's translucent but see with these i did not find uh, butterflies either 
so I got these butterflies, but it's much harder to, as I said, to work with this kind of of molds because they don't keep their shape when you, you see, look what happens when I press on it, it gets fully deformed. So there's no way to, because you need to press fairly hard to get the clay go everywhere, especially if you have molds with recesses. See how no matter how much I pressed, it didn't go all the way in properly. So uh, you need to get your clay super, super soft, and then you risk that when you take it out, you're going to deform it while you're manipulating it you know, until you get it in the oven. Now, as I said, the the easiest way to, and that's why I like about best flexible molds is because it's fairly rigid. So when I go in to get something, it doesn't get deformed at all. And then when I cut my the back of my cabochon, see how it was very easy to pivot the blade. Hi, Joe. Karolina Rotkiewicz. Yeah. So see, it's not as shiny as the other one, but it's still fairly shiny. And there is absolutely no crack in it. Now, let's go to the um, uh, tutorial for the abalone. And this is the result. Uh, it's a pretty interesting tutorial and it's pretty fun to do. Uh, I personally don't find it very realistic. I mean, it looks exactly like polymer clay for abalone. <laughs> That's how it looks like. No, no, that's why I said that's what it's good because you don't risk to, they don't cut. They are pretty much like, you know what the difference between Lisa Pavelka's textures, how you have, have no worries when you do the satin slice and other textures, that's exactly it. It is pretty. It is very pretty but not very abalone-ish. As I said, it's exactly polymer clay for abalone. That's how it looks like. See, and they, they came up beautiful. And I used the, the molds that I've just shown you. They look really, really pretty. And these are made with Primo. And this is a bead made with using the cabochon molds. And yes, they are sanded and buffed. And another one. And why do I say they don't really look like actual abalone? Because this is actual abalone. There's not a lot of... Of course, it depends if the abalone you have is white, if it's green, if it's what type of abalone you have. But... Uh, as I said, no, 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 not really. And I will do with you another for abalone. We'll do a tutorial together and after that yeah june you come later and watch it and after that uh, sometime towards the evening i will post the finished pieces after they bake and i sand and buff them but uh i'm going to explain to you a little bit of the common mistakes that i've seen in for abalone tutorial now, this is the color that was recommended in the tutorial, and they are colored. 
they are colored. But uh, as I said, depending on the type of abalone you, you want to do, some of them have more color than others. Uh, the most colored are the Pawa ones that are around New Zealand. Yes, we will, and that's what I'm going to show you. But uh, one of the things is exactly what you have said, more color. Uh, this would be more like for, uh, the colors would be more for uh, mother of pearl than for abalone. Abalone has a little bit of more contrast. <coughs> <coughs> then, in all of the four abalone tutorials that I've seen out there, you see all kinds of colors. But generally speaking, you don't see all these colors if you study real hard. Uh, you will notice that generally there are three at most four colors. And I'll show you what I mean when we'll prepare the colors. Uh, the other thing, the only one, Pretty much all the four abalone tutorials I've seen out there, be it uh, about clay or be it about acrylic paint, they all recommend using black. Well, in regular abalone, no, in power you will see black and in uh, two more species. But regular abalone doesn't really have black. You have to think about this. These are like in a tree, the growth rings. And uh, that's how they grow. That's why it kind of starts cracking outside on the outside. Yeah, I use them generally as incense burners. That's why most of them have a spot on the back. Uh, so generally speaking, try to avoid using black. If you use a burnt sienna, even with a touch of bronze, you're going to be way more close to uh, what you're looking for. Uh, the other thing is too much deformation. Again, as I said, these are growth rings. You will find the most deformation in the center of the shell. But uh, pretty much as you go towards the rim, the deformation will be almost like a wave. See? Pas de problème, Caroline. Oui, c'est dimanche. Il y a beaucoup de, de gens sur l'internet. Um, so, you shouldn't do this much deformation and I will show you how to do a more I'm not saying that I'm the best okay is what I'm saying that what I noticed in most of the four abalone uh, tutorials uh, the moment you do a lot of deformation that means that you got only the spot that's here because you might get a few spots towards the at the exact rim as you can see, but it also depends, as I said, it depends if what kind of abalone you have, if you have the white, if you have the green, which of them you you have. And that depends on the colors and on everything. Let me get these out of the way. And here it will be very important what clay you use if you want to be very uh, realistic and get a pretty result and uh, in case you only have Primo, what do you use to tint it? Thank you, Daris. That's awesome. See, I, I bought this uh, table on uh, Facebook in the Facebook marketplace and this is a special custom-made table and see it has tile and you can make it larger you can see a pinch of all my stuff that i'm working on yeah i should be able soon to post for you a little tour of where i'm working on but let's go ahead and start with primo okay 
Now, in most of the tutorials, it tells you the same as it tells you in this one uh, to use a little bit of colored uh, clay, just a pinch of colored clay to tint it. You can use a pinch of colored clay. You can use a pinch of um, a few drops of um, alcohol ink. But the thing is, if you want, if you're going to color the white pearl, your mica will still be white. So if you want to color it with clay, then use the pearlescent clays. Don't use the regular opaque clays. But uh, you can make a craft center out of an old home theater. You know, you just open, make it to open and make one of those folding tables that works beautiful. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do the best idea, and remember the other thing, uh, if you watched my For Mother of Pearl tutorial, hi Judy, uh, you remember that there was a huge difference in looks between the Primo and Pardo because of the mica particle. And actually, I think I have them handy. Give me just a minute. No, I thought I did. I... Sorry, I thought I did. I guess I put them where they belong, but never mind. Uh, you can use the Perlex mica powders so that you'll have the uh, actual mica colored in this. But once again, I recommend the Decorom mica powders because the decorum mica is way 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 finer and then the pearlex and the perfect pearls let's not even talk about it so first of all you need to make a mix of half white pearl and half translucent and here i'm going to cut I'm going to make four colors. Okay. And I'll show you how to mix mica because mica can be a little bit of a pain to mix in clay. But I'll show you how to mix it. Let's do first a blue. Let's see. I want this one. No, let's do this one. See, I'm not putting it on the clay. You're not leaving. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Yeah, those are good. They are very, very fine. The mica powders for soap making are usually very fine. And uh, I know that I get mine from a place named uh, Nurture Soap. Nurture Soap. Yes, they have wonderful, they have wonderful uh, micas and fairly cheap too. So... Actually, let me get this other one. Get your mica on the tile. 
because if you put it in here, no matter how much you press, the moment you do like this, it's going to spurt. Hello, Anxenamun. So let's wipe that mica powder. We'll just wipe it in, wipe it in. And let's wipe some more. And now I can start. I usually don't get these through the pasta machine because you don't want to get your pasta machine all full of mica powder. And don't try to put too much at once because you'll have problems mixing it. Remember that if you put powder between two layers of raw clay, they won't stick. So you want to go a little bit at a time. Actually, the soap micas and the very, very fine micas, they mix in the clay much uh, better and much easier than the regular perlex and such. Hello, Marielle. Sweden. That's awesome. And I think I might go just a tad more colorful. So I'm going to do it a little bit more colored. Ah, Fina Bear, which of the Fina Bears? Those Fina Bears, uh, some of their micas are good, are very fine. Now, of course, you can also use the Opal Magic mica powder, and that's going to definitely give you a beautiful, beautiful abalone-like iridescence. You can be sure of that. But not everybody has it, so I said I'm going to do this more for beginner and intermediate, and not a lot of budget. I'm already showing you the best flexible molds, and that's quite a bit of a expense if you decide to get it. But uh, no, I uh, usually I get one best flexible mo mold about every other month. That's how I uh, budget it. Am I going to get all of them? No. Some of them I really don't have any uh, use for, but uh, some of you might, because, for example, there's all kinds with the California. Look for Marie Segal. Because I know she has uh, clayfactory.net. Hold on. Let me see if she has any. And you might want to ask on IHOP. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if she has anything listed. I know they moved recently. They switched houses in Apple Valley. I don't see anything listed. Gallery. Classes, okay, there you go, classes. Oh, there's one in Kentucky in October. Uh, you know, West Virginia and Kentucky. So no, I think that you can just, uh, my best uh, advice would be to ask on hop and check the, the pages of all the, the artists. 
you know. Oh yeah, that's a big, big shock, which well, Owen would not have expected to to be to, for it to be sunny in Florida, huh? Now you don't want to go unless you want to go for a power shell. You don't want to go super, super dark. But I think that I want just one tad darker. One tad, and you'll see in a minute why. And again, I'm wiping it. Because by wiping, all the extra will be still left on the tile. And then I'm wiping it clean. And now I can start. See how it comes apart? Because it's powder on top of raw clay. Oh, thank you, Daris. I'm actually still struggling to... Uh, <laughs> did you read my Facebook? this morning yeah i still had last evening i was very very tired so i'm trying to work on several tutorials at the same time and uh, we've been having a cold snap and that influences how my back is doing right now i took an extra uh, pain pill at around nine o'clock it actually in like 15 minutes i need to go get another one uh but i took a not a double regular dose because i normally take half a dose so i don't get to but i took like three quarters of a dose to be able to work and for it to still work while i'm doing the but anyway Yesterday afternoon, I was struggling real hard because we had bad weather and it was cold and it was windy and it was and my the muscles on my back were catching on fire whenever I was trying to be here more than 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So at around 7, I think it was 7, 7.30, something like that. I was like, okay, I cannot do it anything. I cannot do anything anymore. So I'm going to just put this stuff in the oven and be done for the day and I'll finish what I'll sand and whatever in the morning. So I have uh, where my clay oven is in the kitchen on the counter. On one side, I have the some various baking blanks. Uh, and then on here, I have stuff that I haven't, you know, because sometimes I have several things to bake and I have batches that I haven't uh, baked yet. And on top of the other oven, because I have two convection ovens, one for food and one for clay. On top of the other oven, I have a, you know, like a cookie sheet where I put first the stuff that's been baked. So this morning I go and grab all my stuff and start sanding and start sanding and I get to the, remember that I'm doing this. I finally finished reducing it and I, I'm doing a little pendant also to, to end the tutorial. It's the blooming lotus. Let me focus this. But anyway, so I had a, a little pendant on a, light bulb you know round pendant on a light bulb and i grab it and i start sanding the stuff hello marianne and uh, at one point i get to the pendant then i what the heck's going on because it was kind of like sticky and i look there was like this goo coming out of the sandpaper I, what the heck's going on? I probably was I didn't clean my my stuff in time. So for that one, I used the blueberry. For the next one, I am going to use uh, another fuchsia. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use a nurture soap. Just a second.
this one is called firecracker okay so i'm like oh goodness it didn't i didn't clean it properly and all that and uh, i put it under the faucet with a pinch of dish soap you know and with a brush and i clean it and i start doing sanding it again and again the same goo then i realized it wasn't baked okay when i put it there instead of putting it in the oven i put it where i normally put my uh my baked stuff so when i grabbed everything this morning i thought it was baked <clears throat> so i just put just one pinch of it and the rest i'll uh, put some more pink i'm going to actually use the rose but i wanted uh see it's got a fuchsia but it's a little bit too copperish for me this one so yeah that's what i was making fine like there's always a first for everything first time in my life when i tried to sand raw clay yeah that was something else okay so uh let me get well yeah i know <laughs> let me get the that nurture soap to give you the address for it because she's got beautiful colors and they are very decent uh and she's got dozens and dozens and dozens of colors and what i like about it is uh because here there's another caveat and let me tell you the the whole thing whenever you buy colored me mica okay be very pay a lot of attention or if it says mica powder or mica pigment yes i did but it's not what i did this morning is what i did last evening because i put that pendant on the tray where i normally put the baked stuff not in the oven that was the the deal okay so if it says mica pigment don't buy it the mica will be either silver or goldish and the color the whole color of the mica is given by plain pigment so if you want to do something that you want the mica shift with that specific color of mica to get the effect you need mica powder of that color not mica pigment and uh, that is what i liked about this company because i tried i was looking for some specific colors among which red and oh god i think i got over two dozen and they were all copperish this was the only one that actually had red mica powder red mica is one of the hardest colors to come by uh, but yeah was <laughs> yeah next time i'll know what's going on if i see that go like okay i'm sanding raw polymer clay that's not good But see, it's not that hard to mix the... And now I'm talking with you, so I'm doing it a little bit uh, slower than normal. Because also I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing and all the steps. I can pick up the pace a little bit because we don't want to be here till morning. Okay, I think I want just a tad more, so I'm going to use both. So, yeah, if you look for colored mica, get the mica powder, not the mica pigment. Oh, these are not, uh, these, uh, she sends them in little like med medicine bottles that are about like this. But this is not, this is actually uh, from a, uh, lazy susan type condiment thing i had 
and the condiment spices were old, so I just emptied all the jars and I put mica powders in them and it's just with the color on top. I'll bring it over and I'll show it to you. Let me finish this and I'll do that. All righty. Now wipe, 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 wipe. Turn around. And this one I put a little bit, a lot. A little bit, a lot. But you always want to fold on the with the top one because that's the one that you don't have powder on. So we won't make a mess on the roller and all, all that. No, uh, see, that's the deal. You can buy uh, pearl alcohol ink and mix it with a little bit of color and you'll have colored pearly stuff. But of course, the pearl in the al alcohol ink is also white. So it's not like you're doing a lot. <laughs> there are some uh, metallic alcohol inks. If you look at Trish's store, she's got them. Unfortunately, uh they are piñatas and they only make them in the large bottle size. They don't make them in the small bottle size. I got a white pearl one myself. Yeah, was it Perlex or the stuff or soap? Yeah, you can get a whole bunch of cute storage jars. Uh, generally, look at Goodwill because you'll still be able to find sets of spices. Spice jars, those would be the best things to keep powders and pigments and my kind of stuff. Okay, I'm good now. This is a good color. Now... Let me put this back and I'll bring that to show you how I did. Okay, give me just a minute. I need to go take my pill. Connor was telling me something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I had quite a bit of my costumes. Oh, and don't forget the American body art. Because with them, I have another my costume. Because with them, you get for 99 cents a little bag. Hold on. I'll show you another my costume. Get out of the way, baby. Let's 
see with them you get uh, stuff like this and then I have all kinds of other experimental micas like these are ghosts the ones that are chameleon and all kinds of but see this is what you get from uh, American body art these are 99 cents and you can get a ton of colors but see how gorgeous they are But yeah, I do have quite a stash because I'm getting always, I'm getting uh, uh, sampler kits to get all kinds of colors. Okay, so I did the pink and I did the red. Let's do a gold. You're going to say, yeah, but you can do the gold with gold uh, polymer clay. Yes, but remember I'm going for the fine mica. Yeah, on my stash ideas, what it's a good thing to to hoard on. Yeah, that's a... I said I'm going to do a, a few lives, and maybe not necessarily lives, on, uh, you know, like little tips where you can get stuff, like I did with the baking blanks, you know? Where you can get cheap stuff, like for example, I told you, remember in the what you call it, one of the hard things I told you that you can get these uh, threaded rods for texturing at Lowe's or Home Depot or any kind of, and they are depending on the size, on the length, and on the size on the diameter and on the size of the thread they are anywhere between 40 something cents and around six dollars but the six dollars are the big ones and i didn't want one of those big ones i just got me a big screw <laughs> but there are all kinds of things that you can find stuff so as i said i want to go for with very fine mica so i'm going to use the gold and I'm going to use actually not just the gold, I'm going to use both the, the gold and the chestnut. Because this gold, remember, it's a little bit too brightly like chinese jewelry gold. It's not a very natural color. So I'm going to use both the gold and the chestnut. But I know that the, the ones of you who have bought the decorum are all happy. And I am absolutely thrilled. I think that when this, I'm using this more than any of my other micas. The threaded rod for texture. You didn't see the angel wings? Heart pendant I did. That's what I used for the I did the um uh, netting texture on it. And then I did a mica shift with that. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm trying to say it again during the live but at the very beginning if you watch i will pretty much repeat a lot of the stuff i'm doing um another way if you want to put money on money to get a stash of mica is to get the sets of perlex those are awesome and not only that but perlex has also and it's a pretty good uh price if you look at the size of the jar i know that trish has them for like under four dollars a jar for how much mica you get uh, you know you have the interference colors you know what's the difference between an iridescent and an interference right pretty much the same way as you have the duo colors with perlex that look 
one color on black and another color on white. The interference colors, generally they look white, but then when you move them, they're going to start. Uh, that's one of those that I'm using in the, for example, in the Rainbow Moonstone and in the full Labradorite tutorials. But uh, Perlex has uh, that, and then there's the mink in Perlex that you cannot find in any other mica powder brand. That's one of my most favorite colors of all times, because it's chameleonic. And then, yeah, you can get the chameleon powder. Usually it's either from uh, special effects or from black diamond. Only that those things are freaking expensive. Yes, they work with the, with the big um, screw. You make the zipper. Yeah, it is awesome. You'll love it, Catherine. Okay, I think I need a little bit more of the gold gold. Let me grab a touch more gold. It's not really a touch. It's a lot more than a touch, but oh well. Remember, always fold it with the part that was on top, on the outside of the fold. Because that way you won't be having mica powder floating all over the place. Yeah, but if you go in a home improvement store, honestly, stop in the hardware and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff that you can use. I usually get my 16 gauge, the one that I use armatures, to make armatures. I usually get it from Lowe's because it's cheaper than at the craft store. Almost done. And you know that you have enough when you start getting a little bit of mica shift when you fold. You know. Okay, actually, I think it's more than a little bit. Let me get it real thin first to make sure. And that's pretty much it. Okay, and for the fourth color, I'm actually going to use purple. Because, yeah, I can get a greenish with these two. And you'd say, yeah, I can get a purple using these two, but I'd rather have a purple-purple separately. And I'm using the smallest And I'm going to use this. So this one is violet, and then I'm going to use the lavender as well.
Yeah, I like purples too. You know, this is actually something interesting. The medical studies have shown that for women past 45, their favorite colors start becoming blue and purple. But not only that, you, you probably know about the color therapy and what effects certain colors have on your mood and on your emotion and everything. Oh, purple with sage green. Try that one. Uh, and uh, blue and purple violet have the best distressing effects on women over 45. So, and the idea is that you don't have to have your whole room in that color. You know, it's good to have one spot of that color. Be it a flower, be it a bow, be it a decorative pillow. It's up to you what you choose to, to have. Want to kick it up another notch? Want to use a little bit of the opal magic too? Hmm? Yeah, I wouldn't add yellow. And lavender and sage, not so much. One of them has to be dominant. You're mixing them with the same... Okay, let's grab a little bit of opal magic too. Let's give it a touch of peach and a touch of opal. Yeah, you can find these at uh, both at Polyclay Play and uh, on Amazon. Okay, so lilac. Let's use a little bit of lilac. So see, this is an interference. Can you see the... effects it does but otherwise it looks white oh yeah but red is for being active for being for joy for lust for live life to the fullest See the difference? And it is a very fine mica, this one as well. But I'm going to add only in two of the colors. Oh, it sounds very good. A warm yellow should be just fine. And you can do some blues to complement it, some gray blues. Mm -hmm. 
I'll go for a little bit darker gray blues, you know, like bluestone. Yeah, it's very abalone-ish. Okay, and let's do the peach on the pink. This is the like, oh, I look, this is the peach. Let me get the link for Polyclay Play. I already did, Cherry, I already did. When I went to put back the American body art stuff. Yeah, it depends for what look you're trying to go for. Okay, now let me put all these back. There we go, because I'm going to need to do the pasta machine. Okay, let's clean this area. And now, do you remember when I showed you that uh, plastic seeing that you can get from the cheapo hot pain relieving patches these 
that are fabulous to do very, very thin layers of clay. So one of those at the Dollar Tree is $1. So I am going first to get some working scissors, cut this in half. Because if you put clay in between these, when you go through the pasta machine, uh, you'll be able to get very, very thin clay without it being ripped. So I got a little bit of burnt sienna here. And I got it pretty much on a medium thin. Yes, but you need to be very careful how you put it in so it wouldn't start scrunching. And I'm going to pretty much pat it a little bit on here, but then when I put it in the pasta machine, I'm going to make sure that I hold it like this. So that way the clay won't bunch up. You have to do two passes, but I think I did it good in one pass. Huh? No, I'm going to do a second pass. There we go. And let me get the, all this on the thickest setting. And now, what I'm going to do is, let's get this one and this one, and another one from here. And I'm going to go with these again on the thickest setting.
and I will explain to you why. If you look here, most of the actual lines are not so much dark, but are the color itself. And you can see how the color kind of goes in and out with iridescence. You kind of have a green over a pink and a purple over a blue. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Let me try and get this very, very close so you can see what I'm talking about. See, look here. See, there's no black, there's no brown there. They are just lines of color. So that's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Donna. And I'm going to do one more squishy with these. Let's see, this should go. Alrighty, now going to cut them again in half, pretty much, and going to put kind of like three in a stash. Even four. And on two of them, I'm going to put some of the brown. Um, I'm trying to remember because I know I did that. Well, kind of it was more of a the back of a geode if you look for my easy peasy druzy tutorial look how i did the back of the geodes there the seeker setting sabine this one i got it on the thinnest possible And now the last stack. 
and I'm not going to deform almost at all. You see, I'm simply, you won't be able to do this if you use FEMO, but if you use uh, CERNIT, you'll definitely. And I intend to do something, uh, another separate uh, tutorial for this using CERNIT. See, I practically only what I did with my fingers, pretty much. Yes, pretty much all of the four abalones are mokumegane. And some of them even uh, include using your ripple blade. But as I said, again, it's when you look at the real abalone, it looks like it's a little bit too much deformation. Okay, so you saw everything that I did was to kind of flatten it and then push it back together. Now, let me grab, I have here, uh, one of the cabochon thingies. Let's do a cabochon. And let's cut a slice. Let me get my hello, Dominique. Oh, co congratulations! Felicitations! Dominique got a new job, and this is how it looks like. So let's flatten it a little bit. And I can assure you, once it's going to be baked and buffed, it's going to look fabulous. And we put it on this. And then we put it back in the mold. And you'll see the big, big, big difference between this and this. I promise you it will be a big difference. If you don't have a mold, you just simply do this, okay? So you have your... Um, scrap play. I've shown so many times how to make uh, your own cabs if you don't have molds. And you use your roller to kind of do the
because that's how I do the usually the four gemstones because the, the most of the gemstones they are cut not by a shape but to get the best of the stone if it especially if it's like a fire opal or a tiger's eye the jewelers cut the stone usually in a fairly random shape but a shape that would actually catch the most of the beauty of the stone okay so i did this now i'm going to cut a slice preferably with the sharp end of the blade And here you can use the end of a paintbrush. Okay, let's make a heart because I made the heart with the other one. I'm trying to make the same kind of stuff. It will be gorgeous. Remember that most of the per lesson thing is that you cannot see the the final look until you sand then start buffing that's when the miracle happens And again, let's cut a slice. Okay, let me get the other. Oh, I got the other one for slices. Okay, this was a little bit not very well cut. Good thing I have the remnants from the other stuff. I might leave this for another cabochon and cut another slice. And there we go, much better. But see how now it gives all that uh, play of color that you see in the abalone. No, because it might crack or it might get deformed or the the scrap clay, unless you want to use the whole stack of abalone and cut big slices, uh, the scrap clay can push through. And then when you start sanding, you do a few swipes and you're like, oh my God, scrap clay. But yeah, the, 
with some of the stones that I do also in stacks, that I construct the stack in a certain way, uh, I do cut slices of the stack and put them directly in the mold, like for the blue lace agate, for example. Yes, absolutely. This is how I did this. You are sand and, sanded and buffed by hand. Now let's do... Uh, this. Was it this one? Yeah, it was this one. And see, that's why I'm kind of rough with the the first one that I get out of the mold. I don't really pay too much attention to it. And yes, you can use these if you want. If you want to have a, a backing also. It doesn't always work completely, but you can use it like this. Some of it will still be there. But when I do a full slice, I'll show you a full slice, how you do a full slice of this. If you want to do one in an open bezel. Let me do the round one like that. Oops. I keep stepping on my cord. Was it this one or the other one? I think it was this one. So I'm going to cut a little bit of a thicker slice this time. Which side do I like better? Let's use this side. Make sure that you don't have the very edge on the edge as it is. On the bevel on the edge. You want a full a faced one. But then you can bend these inside. I'm going to place it here again to make sure that everything went where it's supposed to. And yes, these you can use to cover beads if you want. And I think I had one of these. And the bead. Right. Mm. 
Not this one. Which of them? This one? Thank you. But yeah, and you can alternate. For example, if you want, as I said, if you want to do a power shell, you will use uh, essentially green, mostly green, blue, purple, and pink, and you'll use black instead of sienna. Okay, I'm making messes here, but we'll be just fine. Yeah, this is my favorite. This one and almonds or eggs. I forgot how it's called. There's one with almonds and eggs. No, this is almonds and the other one is eggs. They are my most favorite ones. The eggs ones is perfect for uh, stones like Peter's site and even tiger's eye. Okay, now let's do the bead. So I'm going to do two of these and put them together with to form a bead. You saw two remnants, they'll be fine. But you got the, the principle behind it, why you have to put the, the whole uh, sandwich, those colors like that. And I showed you in close up how the abalone looks like and how you have a lot of. Uh... No, and uh, it would be you don't want mink. And another thing that I've seen a lot of uh, people use silver instead of white. And you saw there's no, it gets way too dark. But no, you don't want to. You can, if you want, you can make your own white. Honestly. Using the white pearl. But uh, I wouldn't. I told you the best is the pardo. I don't have, see the cernit metallic doesn't have white. And I don't know if they changed anything in the glamour, but the last glamour I had was uh, by Lina. The last white pearl glamour I had had some humongous uh, mica particles. So I don't know if you want to do it with Cernit. I think that the Cernit, and that's why I said I'm going to do it with Cernit, with the new metallics to see how this will come up. So I'll definitely have to do my own whitish to lighten up some of them. But by what I could see, some of the Cernit colors look absolutely fabulous for an abalone. Yes, it would. Okay, now let's grab a toothpick.
and you want to get something small and do this here because otherwise it won't and make sure that the toothpick turns so it doesn't get stuck in the clay Oops. yeah i'm going to have to finish this real soon i've been up for almost two hours yay And once again, if you ask me how come you don't leave, leave finger paints, uh, fingerprints, I file my fingerprints. Well, not completely, but most of them. So it's really helpful. Okay, and I have a full one here. So let's do what? This one, no, this one is not deep enough. Let's make another round. See how you don't cut in it? You can work on it really good. Okay, what I do? Yeah. You can do that. Okay, I really need to clean this one. It starts sticking. I've used it a little bit too much without cleaning it. So let's just make a designer one oops There we go. Yeah, you can do all kinds of things with it. So I will jump on real quick later because I need first to rest a little bit while these are baking. And then I will sand and buff them real quick and we'll be able to make the comparison after they are baked and comparison with the real deal thank you and uh i told you i'm working real hard to bring those tutorials up please bear with me because it's a matter of weather and bad back so thank you yeah, you can do lentil beads, beads too. You can put the veneers directly on the beady thing. Have a great Sunday and happy claying.
Bye.